So I recently built this drill press powered bicycle. A while back, I was about to scrap this old drill press until I had this crazy idea. What if I could use its motor to build an electric bike? There was just one big problem. This drill press uses a single phase induction motor. It's weak, it needs to be plugged in, and it was never meant to power a bike. But what if I could turn it into something completely different? To find out, I had to open it up and take a closer look at the stator. This stator has 24 slots, which is exactly what I was hoping for. Because 24 is divisible by 3, I can rewind it as a 3-phase motor. My plan is to convert this into a 24 slot, 16 pole brushless DC motor, and this is the winding diagram I'll be using. The diagram shows an outrunner motor, but the winding layout's the same for inrunners like this one. The first step was removing the original windings. For the new windings, I'm using this 23 gauge enameled copper wire that I had from another project. To figure out how much wire I could fit in each slot, I modeled the stator in CAD and also did some test windings. After a bit of experimenting, I settled on using 12 strands in parallel with 4 turns per tooth. To prepare my wire spools, I clamped a wooden dowel to each of my workbenches. I then wrapped the wire around the dowel 6 times to create 12 strands, cut it free, and transferred it onto a spool. To avoid scraping the enamel off the wire, I'm lining each stator slot with fish paper. And to protect the windings even further, I printed these end rings out of high temperature nylon. These rings prevent the wire from scraping against the sharp edges of the stator. Alright, now that the stator is prepped, it's time to begin the winding process. The winding process took a while, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. All right, so now that I'm finally finished with rewinding the stator, I'm going to turn down the rotor on the lathe to make room for the magnets. The magnets that I'm using are grade N52 block magnets. These magnets are 40 millimeters in length, 10 millimeters wide, and five millimeters thick. The rotor is also 40 millimeters in length. I turned down the outside diameter of the rotor from 64 millimeters to about 49 millimeters. I then 3D printed a sleeve out of high temperature carbon fiber infused nylon. The sleeve slides right onto the rotor and will perfectly house the magnets while maintaining an air gap between 0.5 and 0.9 millimeters. I glued the sleeve onto the rotor using JB Weld and before doing that I sanded the surfaces for a stronger bond. Once that cured, I sanded the bottom of each magnet and glued them to the sleeve. This part got messy, but it's easy to clean up the excess epoxy before it dries. I also 3D printed these jigs to keep the magnets compressed against the rotor while they dried. The rotor turned out exactly as I hoped. It feels extremely solid, looks awesome, and fits perfectly inside the stator. Time for me to put this thing together and see if it works. All right, so I'm finally about to do the first bench test with this motor. Um, I'm just using this ESC and the servo tester, and I've got the motor connected in a Y configuration. So hopefully this works.
<laughs> yes. Oh, what a relief. Now that I know the motor works and that I didn't make any catastrophic mistakes, I can move on to installing the Hall Effect sensors and temperature sensor. Hall Effect sensors are used in brushless DC motors to determine the orientation of the rotor relative to the stator. By sensing the rotor position, the controller can precisely time the commutation process, ensuring smooth and efficient motor operation. If you'd like to learn more about Hall Effect sensor placement, I recommend watching my video on building an alternator powered bike. Before adding the sensors, I went ahead and soldered on the 10 gauge motor leads. I also replaced the PLA wedges with high temperature nylon ones. I'm using 120 degree sensor spacing, which for this motor conveniently results in spacing the sensors just one slot apart. I installed a thermistor right beside the hall sensors, which will allow me to monitor the motor temperature with my cycle analyst. With the sensors in place, I tidied up the wiring and the motor was once again ready for testing. This time I connected it to a sensored controller and a 48 volt battery. Just like before, the motor worked with no issues, and I measured the RPM to be just under 4,000. Now all I had to do was clean up the motor and give it a fresh coat of paint. The next step is putting it on the bike, and that's where things get exciting. All right, so this is the bike that I'm gonna be using for this project. It's a single speed bike, and I'll be using the fixed sprocket to attach a pulley. I'm going Tom Stanton style with this project, and we'll be using a belt drive. With my previous bike and go-kart projects, I've always used chains, but since I'll be running a fairly high gear ratio, a belt lets me 3D print a large, lightweight pulley. I modeled the bike frame in Fusion so I could accurately design the motor mount, wheel pulley, and other components. I printed the wheel pulley in nylon and went with a 160 tooth design, which is the largest size that would fit on my build plate. All right, now with the bike complete, it's ready for testing. Okay, here we go. First test with the drill press powered bike. well and the motor isn't even hot it's currently 32 degrees Alright, so for the final testing, I limited the current to 30 amps to prevent the motor windings from overheating. Overall, this motor has really impressed me. 
It delivers plenty of torque, and the top speed is about what I expected for these pulley sizes. Now let's see how well it performs on a 300 meter hill climb. I began to lose speed near the top, but the motor still did a great job. The temperature peaked at about 70 degrees, which is totally reasonable for a hill climb like this. Throughout all my testing, I didn't run into any issues, and there was nothing I had to stop and fix between runs. The entire setup works really well. One thing I didn't expect though before starting this project was just how much cogging torque this motor would have. It's actually pretty tough to turn the motor shaft by hand. Cogging happens because the permanent magnets on the rotor are constantly lining up with the stator slots, which creates that notchy resistance when you try to spin it manually. Luckily this doesn't cause any problems while riding, but you can definitely feel it when pushing the bike at low speeds. This project was a lot of fun, and I think it's really cool that you can turn a single phase induction motor into a powerful brushless DC motor. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and maybe learned something new about motors along the way. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.